So, what's up guys? I know it's been a very long time since I uploaded anything to this channel. But I'm back now with probably the most fun I've had in a long time playing Elden Ring. Right now, I'm mostly diving deep into PvP and I'd like to share the knowledge I've gathered so far with you guys. So without further ado, I want to show you a couple of invasions with the Fire Knight's Greatsword. One of my favorite greatswords from the DLC. This is what we're going to be looking at in this video. Let's get started. This weapon is incredibly effective due to its light attack to light attack through combo. If your opponent gets hit by the first attack, they won't be able to roll out of the second one, even if they try spamming the roll button. As demonstrated here, the second hit is unavoidable. However, this doesn't apply to jumping attacks. Only the standing light attack works this way. Most people use follow-up Ashes of War that can roll catch after the second hit, which is effective in duels. However, in invasion scenarios, I found that using Ashes of War that allow you to trade with multiple opponents is the best approach. So in this invasion I chose to go in with Endure as my choice of Ash of War. And here I spawn in near the complete party. So I try to just dodge as best as I can. And as soon as I get hit, I try to run back, get some cover and heal up. So in this kind of scenarios, you need to use the environment to your advantage. So here I hide behind the two enemies that are here. Always try to use any tools you have to lure uh, people in. And the nice thing about the Endure is that it also reduces the damage you take. And I also have my Crimson Bubble tier here, so I can use Endure trade into the, into the three of them, and then I get a nice kill. Next I just try to stay on top of them, I wait for the enemy to follow up as well. I stay lower on HP just to bait them into attacking me, and it works, so I get a double kill here. So here I wait for the phantoms to attack an enemy and then just run in, so this way I can fight them one by one. Here I get a nice true combo on the summon here, and I just try to follow up with a jumping attack. Uh, I don't get him in time, so I just fall back for the time being. I see that this guy is spamming our one, so I try to trade, but he didn't follow up. I change as fast as I can, which is not that fast, to a talisman to heal myself. I give this hunter some space, so I can see what Ash of War he has. You gotta be careful now with so many new Ashes of War in the DLC. I get a nice bit of damage here, and then I wait for the best opportunity to trade with Endure, which is here, and then I get a nice kill on the Hunter. I go back to heal myself, and then I notice that they are very uh, aggressive, so I just try to take advantage of the true combo as much as I can. I try to lure them into this room where there's another enemy and heal myself. They are still very aggressive, so I take advantage of the true combo here with Endure. Try to use the heavy attack here, which is the nice white hander heavy attack. It gets me some poke damage and then the host just falls for an R1. Here I want to showcase why poise is so important with the setup. I'm using the Bullgod's Talisman here and a very heavy armor set, so I'm probably around 100 poise or more. These guys are not very aggressive, so I try to focus the wizard and the host falls behind me. Once they're both close, I try to true combo them here, I get the host, and then I just poise through that and kill the phantom as well. In this invasion, I'm trying out the Waves of Darkness, Ash of War which is very good to trade with enemies. This guy here is doing some fantasy footwork. I give him some space to see what he's going to do and he then changes to a lighter weapon. The good thing about the Colossal Spoke, the one that comes out of the rolling attack, is that you can then combo it with something else. So here I try to use it with the Waves of Darkness. I get him with the hit uh, of the sword, so that stun locks him into the full combo and gets me the kill. Here I poise through his uh, jumping attack, you can see why poise is so important as I said before. 
Here I switch to a lighter weapon to go after him, but he manages to get the heal off. After seeing that the backhand blades are not doing that much damage to them, I whiff the double light attack into a Waves of Darkness that gets him. The good thing here is that Waves of Darkness gives a lot of poise on the beginning of the Ash of War, so use that to your advantage. In this invasion I'm fighting against a team of two, and they're using an Ash of War that I haven't seen yet before, or maybe that's an incantation, not very sure. Uh, the case is that it has a lot of AoE, so I try to just go in and lure them into this tunnel, which is more advantageous for me. It does take them a while to follow me here, so what I do is I just switch to the FP regen talisman. I also use the Vistial's vitality to regain some HP while I'm waiting for them to come here. And then I switch back to the Bullgoat's talisman whenever I'm already full on FP. After a while they finally decide to come down. I actually failed to get them with the light to light. I take a lot of damage so I just fall back for now. I try to use Flame of the Red Mains to gain some space. This Ash of War is not that very useful in some scenarios but it ends up being very useful later on. So here I use this trap uh, to my advantage to just gain some space and if they try to follow me they take damage just like they did here. There's also an enemy here, uh, which shoots long-ranged projectiles. Notice that I'm purposely not healing all the way up to full, just in case that they will be baited by my low HP and then just come in. So I'm just slowly healing with my regen, and then they finally decide to uh, come here. I use my flask, and then the flame of the red mains ends up being very useful to get some damage. Um, I did not get hit that hard here because of the talisman that I used to raise my defenses. And here I noticed that the uh, enemy is shooting projectiles so I take that chance to go after them and then the fl flame of the red mains gets another hit. Uh, they're very desperate here so they're just trying to hunt me down. In this case the trap is actually working to my advantage. They finally end up following me here to where there are more enemies, so this way I can at least try to split them and fight them one by one. The host is now stuck fighting with the mobs, which gives me the chance to fight with the summon one on one. I clear the bleed and when they're distracted I just come back in running and get a nice kill here. Now it's just a one on one with the host here. Flame of the Red Mains is not gonna be very useful on one-on-ones, as you can see here, but I still get ahead. And the host is just overwhelmed with enemies here as well, so I just switch to a faster weapon and get him with Blind Spot. The build that I use in this video is focused on strength, so 54 minimum, uh, so when you two-hand the weapon you will actually get 81. 60 bigger is what you will need at least to get the maximum HP possible and this would let you trade with the most damaging Ashes of War and with multiple phantoms at the same time. The 12 faith that we need for the weapon actually lets us use Visual Vitality, which is very useful. These are the talismans that I used, uh, so just try to get the maximum points possible, HP and equip load. Try to always have at least one ranged uh, option so you can lure enemies into you. So here I'm using the hefty frost pot and finally just make sure that you have at least one light weapon option uh, for when enemies run away from you and you can just have a quick way to catch up to them. These are some optional talismans that you can use. The two-handed sword talisman is very good because it will boost both your, your light attacks. The blessed dew talisman, I just use it for long invasions. The Shard of Alexander if you're going to use any Ashes of War that actually deal damage. Which you don't need when you're going to use Endure, for example. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching the video until the end. Let me know if this was helpful to you and see you next time.